that's perhaps they can do that, um, you know, explain the new concept to the group that they are sitting next to, and sometimes they could explain that to the whole class. I, I think that's where they are showing, you know, this sort of, um, you know, independence, you know, that, that, that I really want my students to do. But indeed, they can create, you know, their own presentations, uh, and because we've got, um, you know, we use, as a school, we use the Google Drive. Uh, what the students can do is, obviously, with a particular iPad, with the iPad, they can create their own video and then straight away they can be uploaded onto the Google Drive. So they can share that with me or they can share it with the rest of the class. So for example, um, the first thing that I do when I start flip learning with any groups is um, I ask all my students to, to create you know, their own folders that they are going to be sharing with me. And then at the same time, what I do is I share a folder with all my students that's helping me, obviously, to put any resources, anything that, 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 I, that I'm using, I just drag and drop into the Google Drive and students have access to that straight away. So if I can do that, students can do exactly the same thing. Um, so they can create their own videos, their own presentations, either at home as part of their homework or perhaps, you know, that could be one of the tasks that we do in lessons. Um, and again, I can see straight away, you know, what they have done because they upload that onto the Google Drive. So I have access to that um, straight away. Is that is that the sort of answering the question? Yeah, I think that answers the question really well. Thank you. Um, have you ever yeah. realised that the um, audience view was kind of paused? And so I'm not sure that uh, everyone saw the uh, slides at the right time. Um, just so everyone knows, all of these slides are available um, as handouts. So I've uploaded two handouts. One of them is uh, this presentation. Um, and the other is the uh, flipped learning report by Nesta that I mentioned in the email about this webinar. Um, so you should be able to. Um, download both of those from the handouts but I'll also try and uh, keep up. <laughs> um, Do you want me to um, very quickly if, if um, people can see for example handout 8 and 9 please. Uh, so is, um, I can talk, 8 is the next is page right so that's uh, the homework page? The homework please yeah, yeah then great. I can talk about what one of my homeworks looks like if that's right if yeah, that's brilliant. Okay with you. I think that the homework is a really okay. important part of flipped learning so yeah I think that's a good it, idea. Indeed. <laughs> Okay, that's all right. So, um, if everybody can um, have a look at the, the, you know, this slide, which is, uh, you know, it's called homework. Um, what you can see in there is what, um, you know, what I do with my homework. So, uh, you can see that the first thing that I do is either I can create, you know, I create my own video, or I just get it from the YouTube. Um, and obviously, students, the students, what they're going to do is they're going to be watching their video. Uh, then. Obviously, students need to complete a Google form, okay, to test understanding. So, I will be asking some questions. Uh, I will given I will be giving them a task that they need to complete um, at home. Um, so they they complete the Google form. The the very good thing about this is that I will get their homework with me straight away, uh, and I will get their answers. Um, and then obviously. What I do is uh, using the answers, uh, then I group my students uh, again based on you know how many they have got correct. I put them into groups, uh, and obviously that's going to um, allow me you know just to highly differentiate the lessons. Um, what I would say is that uh, if um, you haven't done this yet, um, and even if you've done it, uh, students need training um, because. I have learned that, so I learned some time ago that uh, I, I, I assumed that students knew how to watch a video and how to take note, but how wrong I was, obviously. Uh, some of them were brilliant. Um, you know, the task perhaps was, you know, watch the video and I would like to take um, notes right on the main points. Um, some of them, you know, they watched the video, uh, but they didn't really take that many notes and they just wrote down a few lines and obviously that wasn't acceptable. So I learned the lesson, and then what I did the following year, um, I uh, spent a whole lesson in class teaching them how to use, how to watch a video and how to take notes. Um, so students definitely need training with this model, um, and I think that's uh, like everything else, you know, that they need this training, they need practice, so that's, uh, you know, you can force their excellent, you know, um, habits. Um, what I would also say is that despite um, the idea of you know me trying to use 
new technologies as often as I can. Uh, you know, it is always important to have a paper backup um, because obviously some students, even though you know they've got, we've got lots of um, you know ICT rooms here and they've got the library with access to computers and so on. You will always have some students who will say, you know, I didn't have um, access to this. Um, so have a paper backup and um, you know try to have all the resources that uh, you're going to be using in several places. For example, we've got um, um, the VLE, which where we put all, you know all our resources. But at the same time, I have put everything that I have used into the Google Drive. So they've got several, you know, places. So if the school website is down, they can always access um, the Google Drive. Okay. Um, Iggy, is it possible to show the next slide, please? Yes. There you go. So um, hopefully you can see the next slide. Uh, and again, you've got four different pictures, and that's one of my homeworks. So as I was saying. Um, at the top, we've got a video that I created with one of my colleagues. Um, obviously, we created the video uh, explaining the new concept instead of using something from YouTube. That, that's what we did. Then on the right-hand side, um, what you can see is the Google form so, um, so that we can collect all their answers. Then, obviously, we created a Google form that we share with all the students. And then students, what they have to do or what they had to do was just record, you know, just um, type their own answers to the questions that they can listen uh, and they can find in the video. Um, and then the second half, obviously, we've got the collating results. So from the Google uh, embedded form on the VLE, we get, you know, into the, the collation of results. And then we've got all the questions at the top. Uh, we've got all the answers from the students, and then something which I really like is the timestamp. Um, we know what time you know the students um, access, or the students you know what time the students create it um, or, or complete their homework. It's quite interesting to see that, believe it or not, some of the homeworks were completed at one o'clock in the morning, uh, two o'clock. Uh, that's wrong, and obviously we had a conversation with the students, but it's interesting to to know you know what time you know, students complete their homework. And once we have collated the homework, and then we've got the grouping. Um, as you can see in there, obviously we've got uh, all the students' names, uh, and then we've got uh, different colors. So based on um, how many correct or wrong, you know, correct or incorrect answers they got, then we put the, group, the students into three groups. Um, we just put them into colors like, you know, the reds, uh, the ambers, and the green, so that's entirely up to you how you want to do that. Um, but we also started as well with the purples. Now, what that means is that um, based on those um, groups, I am going to be creating um, differentiated activities for each group. So obviously, you know, as you can understand, um, those students have got, you know, correct answers, then I need to make sure that I challenge them and I, and I push them. They, they are likely to be the most um, able students. And then we got down. Um, we, as I mentioned, I think right now, we also used to have a purple group. And the purple group was the group that obviously didn't complete the homework at all. Um, and then what we do with those students is that they are sitting uh, by themselves in the classroom uh, they are not grouped, obviously, unless we've got two or three students who haven't completed. They will be completing the homework that they should have completed at home. Uh, and then they will be, obviously, once they've done their homework, they will be able to move on to the next, um, you know, the next task. Uh, so this is what the homework um, looks like, not all the time, but when I do, you know, a video, um, you know, or I use the Google Forms, this is what I normally do. Um, this is not the only way to do it, um, but this is probably the, the, the way that I use probably the, the, the most, really. Thanks, Javi. Um, I know that there are a few people That's on okay. the line. <laughs> I know there are a few people on the line who are um, able to type but not speak. So if you're one of those people, um, if you've got a question for Javi about his way of implementing flipped learning please do get typing now and I can read those out um, Thank you. and I was I was just wondering Javi I, I think when you were talking about training the students up in order for them to be able to 
uh, be able to take notes independently. I think this is a brilliant way, and, and flipped learning in general is a brilliant way of in, encouraging student independence, which is something quite a few of our schools are uh, trying to promote. Um, I know that there were quite a few people who emailed me about this webinar saying that they couldn't come on, but that they wanted the recording. And they were at primary and secondary level. So I was yeah. just wondering, I know that you first implemented flipped learning back in the day with year eight. Would you say that this training yeah, right. is most appropriate for key stage three? Do you think, from your experience, would, would there be less training if you were looking at key stage four? Do you think that you'd use a different system if you were working with your youngest students, say year seven, or if you did work with um, year six students? Um, obviously, I, I don't have any experience with primary um, schools, unfortunately. I would like to. to oh, well, you know, get that's, that's okay, because actually Kirsty and Jen will be able to talk to that anyway, I guess. So then we can hear from them yeah. in a bit. Have you used them um, yeah, flipped with Key Stage 4 at all, or Year 9? Yes, I have indeed. Um, right. But what I was going to say, what I was going to say is that um, the, the, the earlier that you start, the better. So yeah. my idea is that at some point, while year sevens, but oh, uh, as right. soon as my, my, my year seven is set and they are set, they are put into groups, I will be teaching them on how to use flip learning because I think that they need to get there, you know, as soon as they can really, because there is nothing different, you know, I will be expecting, you know, the, the same, it will be the same concept, obviously different activities, different tasks, but the concept is exactly the, the, the same. It's about them being more independent, it's about them doing some research, um, it's about them working in groups, uh, them, you know, talking, you know, working with me as well so that we can just move faster. So what I've done, I have done flip learning. I started with my year eight and I think that's, uh, it's important to mention that um, I did, the first time that I did uh, flip learning three years ago was with my year eight class and it was a set four out of four. Now, I thought that that was going to be a disaster. Um, but believe it or not, I think that it's been the class that has been more receptive. They, they've been that you know they really embrace the whole concept um, really, really quickly, and they were so mature. Again, there was a lot of work that we did in the background, you know, just uh, explaining why we were doing it and so on. So I did this with my year eights. Uh, I've done that last year. I did it with my year nines. I've done something with my year tens as well. I haven't been able to do some uh, proper flip learning were proper. Uh, some, yeah, some flip learning with my year 11s because time was an issue and obviously there's lots of, you know, I, I don't really have too much time because there's so much content that I need to cover. I, I don't do flip learning as such, but I try to do tasks, obviously, which are some sort of, you know, flip tasks. Um, but proper flip learning, I would say definitely with 8, 9 and 10. Great, so you, certainly it's worked for you with slightly older students as well. Um, and someone I know has um, used flip learning with Key Stage 4 really well is um, Pritpal Chandan. And Pritpal has asked about the positive outcomes um, and results that you've had. And so I guess actually you found it's been really good for confidence and that maturity developing in your lowest set. Have there been, have yeah. been any other um, outcomes that you've uh, noticed or observed? Um, I, I think that um, I, I don't know if this is relevant now, but I think that the the, the relationships um, that you uh, establish with the students are better um, because again, students feel valued and the students feel that you are spending you know more time with them and that you care more about them. When it's just not like that, obviously, you know, I care about all of them and you know <laughs> independently whether I'm doing some flip learning or not but these relationships I, I think that that's what's worked for me um, is them knowing that I can give them more support and particularly when you when you know when you're teaching some big groups they they do appreciate that because um, again if you have difficult classes like my year eight for example I thought that it was going to be a disaster but they, you know, I had some really, really nice kids in there who really wanted to learn, and you know, they they chose the Spanish. They knew obviously that I could be with them and, and spend longer, really. So the, the the relationships definitely is something that I would say, you know, that really, really improved. Um, 
Absolutely. And obviously, again, you know, them being, you know, feeling more motivated, I think, perhaps the new, you know, the use of new technologies, and also the idea of saying, you know, obviously it's up to you. You, you know, I really trust you. Uh, this is what you have to do. You know, just show me now how mature you are. So having these conversations with them, I think that's um has definitely um you know have you know has been a good uh, outcome really for me. Yeah. So I guess um students have got to be able to do the homework before the lesson starts or or the lesson wouldn't work so there's a definitely degree of trust when when you say Indeed, you, yeah. when you say you're spending more time with them do you think that's partly I know how you make your own videos quite a bit of the time do you think it feels very personal and that's it or do you mean because you've had the input before the lesson it's that you have more time in the lesson to go and speak to in, individuals well, f first of all, obviously, um, if I can quickly talk about the, the videos, we um, ask for some feedback after, you know, what we always do that when, when we do, you know, finish the flip lessons. Um, and the first thing the students said to us is that they prefer, um, you know, watching our videos rather than someone else's video. It's more personal mm -hmm. to them because they know you and so on. So that, that, that was the first thing. Um, and obviously, this is why we try to create as many videos as we can. Uh, and what was the other question, sorry, that you have just asked? Um, yeah, I was wondering if it was the video input that made them feel like they were spending more time with you. And I guess that, so oh. partly that is popular, but partly is it that you have more time during class time? Yeah, and... I, I, indeed. You know, obviously, um, we gain easily a good 20, 25 minutes. Because, for example, uh, and that's and this is why I think it is really valuable, particularly for the key stage four, key stage three as well, but more for key stage four. Um, we, when we have to introduce a new concept, or when we have to introduce new vocab, or when we have to, to introduce a complex structure, we are talking about a good 15 minutes in the lesson with the practice yeah. that we do in lessons. We are talking about good 15, 20 minutes. Now that is happening now at home. So that's giving me another 20 minutes, extra 15, 20 minutes, where I can really sit with the students, checking for understanding and making sure that they understood everything. And then I can do this, you know, more work with them. Um, I think that that's, believe it or not, it feels like, you know, you say 15 minutes, is, it doesn't sound like a lot. But when you've got, obviously, an hour lesson and then you lose 10 minutes, you know, five at the beginning and five at the end, we're talking about a 50 minutes lesson. So to be able to say that, you know, you're gaining... 20 minutes you've got another 20 mm -hmm. minutes extra that we don't normally have in lessons if we teach the, the the traditional way i think that that that's a lot of time really uh so this is why i've got this extra time to work with the students yeah excellent that makes a lot of sense thanks very much javi now i'm not sure yes, if right. um anyone uh, who's on the line can actually speak using their microphone. I think most people's uh, microphones aren't working. Um, if you do have a microphone and want to use it to ask a question, then do otherwise. Um, I think we're just about ready to move to the next presenter. And Kirsty, I see you've unmuted yourself. So we should have Kirsty and Jen from Shireland about to speak. And I will... Hi there, Iggy. Did you get a PowerPoint, yeah. Iggy? I did. I've got it here. Now, can you see it on your screens? Uh, I think you can uh, be able to get the audience view. Yay! Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, great. And um, just like before, um, this handout's also um, in the handout section of this webinar, so hopefully uh, everyone's got that too. Um, so, um, Kirsty and Jen, just let me know when you want uh, me to click ahead and as always if everyone I, I think everyone's mics are off so just um, type in questions as and when and guys I'll let you know if you've got any <laughs> no thank you and Javier it was really great to hear um, your story and how you've built on it for three years and I think a lot of the things that we heard uh, heard you saying absolutely resonates with us in terms of what we've seen at Shireland um, across various different um, departments and subjects, um, but also in the primary schools and within which we're working as well. So um, I suppose the, the, the thing for us to, to just explain who we are, I think that would be helpful. So hmm. my name's Kirsty. I'm um, assistant principal here at Shireland in charge of e-learning and, um, and also maths flip director. Um, and MathsFlip is a, uh, an Education Endowment Foundation um, funded project which is the largest um, UK independent evaluation into flip learning. So um, 
I, I'm working on that. And then Jen, if you want Hi, to. Hi, um, I'm Jen. I also work here at Shyland, and I've been leading on the MathLit project. So um, although I work here, which is a secondary, I don't teach here. I've been out on the ground working with 24 different schools um, as part of the project and then a few more schools have come on board as well as they've been interested about flip learning um, so I've been helping uh, lots of different schools to implement flip learning in key stage two year five and six so I mean um, if you could go to the next slide for us Iggy um, I mean Javier you talked really well about the, you know the curation of the videos that you did or just sourcing them from YouTube which I think is you know it's not cheating you know um, uh, using these, but but for us, it's not just about the um, the video. Um, it's maybe it's a curated video. Maybe it isn't a video at all. You know, um, maybe it's writing the next part of a of a story because you've been given some stimulus from a website, uh, or maybe it is about children making their own um, curating their own videos as well for each other to to. Um, to use as well. So for us, it was more about the methodology and the teaching sequence rather than the um, creating videos itself. So yes, many of our staff do curate their own videos, but it's not the be all and end all for us in flip learning. I suppose what we've done is taken the flip learning and the flip classroom ideas and just adapted it for us in our own context. And I think that's the beauty of flip learning is that you can absolutely make it fit for your own school um, and your own context as well, you know, you can take bits of it that match what technology infrastructure you have, which bits of technology you want to use to engage the children, um, or just the way that you you actually teach and the way that your school is organised. So that that's what has been important for us. And we've got a nice little um, on the next slide, slide three. Uh, we've just got our, our attempt to kind of. Um, um, show what that looks like, um, which is exactly what Javier has just been um, talking about, is for us it's it's not just removing the knowledge part, it's as Javier said, it's also about that testing, that initial understanding as well. So I think if you, if you click through that you'll see that it isn't just about watching the video, it's watching the video and answer some questions, or watching the video and taking part in a discussion forum, or watching the video and writing the next bit that might happen next, for example, if it's in English. Um, so if we go into the next slide, for us, what some of the things that we found, and, and what was good was Jen and I presented um, down in London last week at the Nesta event the, when the report was um, uh, was due out and it was really nice to see um, that their findings in their report was absolutely what we also saw as well um, and some of the key things we found for, for the success of flip learning doesn't matter what, which school you're in is that you've got um, staff training and you train staff on how to do this. I mean, Javier talked about training pupils as well, and actually, I've got down staff CPD from my perspective as a senior leader who's embedding flip learning across the whole school. Um, but pupil training is as important as well. Um, having an online platform of some sort to be able to share and have that interactive element and dynamic uh, interaction between the student um, and the teacher. Um, whether that's a blog, whether it's Google Classroom, uh, we use Office 365 um, at Shireland um, and in the, the schools as well. But as long as there's a place where teachers can put the content and ask those questions and children can respond to that or upload their work. Um, having a, a really clear idea of what your own definition of your flipped learning methodology is. Um, and then monitoring the impact. And I think that's one of the that's one of the things that I think as schools sometimes we don't always do. We have a good idea and we, we put it in place, but it's about making sure that we evaluate the impact of it and monitor it, you know, because in some classes it might not be working and it's about really delving down as to why isn't it working and finding the, the answer to that. Is it because not all the children have access at home? You know, is it because the teacher isn't allowing enough time for that interactive element to take place? Um, and I think that's where we have to do a lot of the training with staff, and Jen certainly does in the primary schools. It's about saying to, to teachers, it's you really do have to plan how you're going to do this. You're not planning extra, 
you're just taking a little bit more care about when you're delivering things and just allowing that time for them to to um, to respond. Home access obviously is vital, and as I say, all these elements are are, are pretty crucial to the success and in independent uh, interdependent. So we we thought we'd just take people through the math split. Um, project if that's okay if we go on to the next slide and just explain a bit about that yeah because um, it's I've, just been really um, I've got a question it's as well on the next to bear in mind um, that Jules is asking um, how many lessons do you use the flipped learning mos uh, model every lesson or um, uh, one in every three or less than that which I think might be useful to, uh, as a kind of frame how often is yeah. this happening in these classrooms yeah and I think I think it's you know any good classroom practitioner will judge which lesson is best to flip. You can't flip every lesson because it just would, it, you, you can't do that. Um, we have found, um, we try and say at least once a week where there's a decent um, uh, activity and purpose to the flip learning, but you can have mini flips, you know, which is literally read this, um, I need you to look at this website for the next lesson and there's a poll. Um, where it works the best, and we've seen across all, um, a range of subjects, even PE um, and design and technology subjects that you think might not, it might not necessarily suit, um, is where it's prior learning and you are assessing a start of a topic um, and you want to get gauge um, where children, where learners are, and that's where we found flip learning really works at its best. Yeah. And also for a um, revision, where you want to revisit something that the children have previously learned about, um, to reactivate that prior knowledge that they've got so that you can move further, further on in your lessons rather than having to go back to basics and revise within the classroom. Uh, so another place it works well is for revision or when you're revisiting a topic. Brilliant. Thanks. And has that answered your question? I think Jules has replied saying that it's the same. That it's the same as Jules is at George Spencer Academy, and it's the same as what they're doing there, and that they have flipped whole units yeah. though, on occasion. I think um, Javi. I think you mentioned that sometimes you had um, everything up on the Google Drive. So I guess that's when you flipped a whole kind of unit at once and saying, well, these things are all there on the Google Drive. I think that's the approach. Sometimes people flip right this this topic is going to be flipped all of the way through and sometimes people say let's have a little bit but consistently throughout so that students are really used to it I guess the um the main message is that if you if you do it more than once students are uh, more comfortable with it have learned a bit right yeah I think there's a difference between just putting resources up and, the, and a scheme of work and lesson plans for students to um, access in advance and I, but, um, so the difference between that and then a teacher actually crafting a flipped learning activity. Yeah. So. So yeah. that it's you should be looking at this thing at this particular point because it's going to prepare you yeah. for what we've got in the lesson. Yeah. 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 Can't. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, shall I move on to the next slide? Yeah. So um, the the um, the EF project is. Um, uh, the context we were given by the Education Endowment Foundation is to um, um, test flip learning in years five and six. Um, and you can see the project aim there, which is about utilizing e-learning solutions in the right mouthful. Um, but basically, it's um, uh, about uh, looking to see whether flip learning works uh, in years five and six in maths. It's a two-year project. And um, there were some byproducts as well as the main project aims. We were hoping to create a math support network across the 24 schools. Um, also supporting what was level six, but now obviously is um, because the project started um, before the new national curriculum, uh, but certainly the more able and higher able uh, children uh, of, of, of level six. And then also making sure there was a, an evolving resource site as well where teachers and, and um, uh, could upload and share um, the very best quality resources as well. Um, so that was the, the, the project aim. Um, and if you go to the next slide, the next two slides actually, you can see the cohort one schools that are involved um, and cohort two schools. And um, the schools that were involved had to be of a high level um, free school meals pupil premium eligibility um, because this was very much looking at whether flip learning would have an impact uh, on those children 
that were receiving free school meals or were people premium. Um, this the structure. If we go to the next slide, um, Iggy, and we just we'll put this on as three parts. So the first is the learning zone, and the learning zone was um, I, I um, explained that we did the heavy lifting in aggregating all the very best resources, and it's a bit like a sweet shop. So we went and found and sourced um, the very best resources that we knew. Um, and we had help from the other project director, Nikki Jones, who was a former maths advisor, who um, worked with us in terms of categorising and structuring the, the Learning Zone site. And this just so that teachers didn't have to spend a Sunday afternoon or a Wednesday evening trying to find the best you know, resource or making one. We wanted that to be there because for us, we weren't testing whether they could make the resources or find a good resource. We're testing the flipped learning methodology. So it's important that we did all that work and sorted those out. The next one was the sharing zone. Um, and that wasn't as successful. That was supposed to be where teachers could share ideas and come together and discuss. But teachers have such busy lives that having a, a discussion about flipped learning, they did, but it wasn't as successful as we wanted it to be. We found um, and then finally, where the magic happens and where the flipped learning takes place. Pardon? Oh, sorry, I was saying uh, we found exactly the same with our internal website, discussion website. It's uh, yeah, it's something has to be very specific to get a discussion going. Yeah, and I think sometimes, to, you, well, I'm, I've got forum fatigue, to be honest, you know, yeah. because every every conference I go to or every group I'm part of, you know, you, 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 you're expected to kind of to interact on a forum. And, and, and although you want to, and I think, you know, there are some really um, relevant things that you could get out of, of being part of a forum, sometimes it's just the time to, to be able to do it and take part fully. So, um, And then you've got finally you've got the class sites and that's where the flipped learning happens. So this is where uh, year five and six teachers would have their own class site and this is where they would craft their, the flipped learning experiences for their um, pupils. So they would put links to um, particular resources that were on the from the learning zone and then they would um, craft an activity and um, a teacher in one school would take a particular resource and craft one activity around it but Jen might be in another school and would um, it would take another way and that was the beauty that it was how schools adapted and, and used the methodology but weren't tied to a particular way of using it. Um, if we go to the next slide, um, Jen will just start to talk about the findings that we had um, in terms of, of this because it did kind of strike at a time when the new curriculum hit, didn't it? Yeah, so um, one thing I'll just add about the learning zone is that the resources on there weren't just activities that teachers could set for pupils to access at home. So that was part of it, is that we were providing resources um, for them to use it for flip learning at home. But also there's a lot of lesson activities there for the teachers to use within their classroom. So what we were really interested in was the so what, what happens after flip learning if children have um, access and free learning at home and come prepared to uh, learn about a topic in greater depth. We were focusing on providing tasks and challenges and problems for maths that would um, allow teachers to focus on those higher order skills and with the new curriculum there's a lot of talk about mastery and learning in greater depth so we were really trying to support that um, approach. Um, it's something I didn't fully anticipate in the first year of the project where we were year six was still uh, using the old curriculum that this flipped learning approach really provides support for implementing the new curriculum in the classroom because the um, aims of the curriculum can really be met well by flip learning if we're talking out about people becoming more fluent um, and using their problem solving and reasoning skills then flip learning can allow you more time within the classroom to develop those skills and they can do the more procedural aspects or the um, lower order skills at home um, the other thing I thought when we were first doing this that maybe it would be the more able pupils who would benefit most, the pupils who were already quite motivated um, and high ability in maths, but we haven't really seen that. We, see, we have seen that group of pupils really do well with this approach, but it's extended across the other ability groups as well. 
Um, so we're seeing that this approach can help all ability levels of children. And Jen's seen some really, um, and heard some really great examples. For example, in one school there was a, a little girl who, in the classroom, um, was not um, the most confident of learners in the classroom and um, very rarely put a hand up and offered um, her opinion or ideas and yet at home just found um, that she blossomed mm -hmm. and she in the end she was actually independently of the teacher the teacher hadn't asked her to do this um, she had taken a device home and was creating <coughs> tutorials um, for her mom actually to to learn some of the concepts and to teach her mom at home and the teacher was so impressed that the teacher then used those in class as well so um, there's some lovely sound bites that we've had across the various schools as well on that um, if we go to the next slide um, again uh, I think it's just what um, Jen's talked about in terms of the, the national curriculum and becoming more fluent um, and if you go to the next one as well we've just now got some um, just some what some of the things that teachers have said um, about the fact that they're getting on to you know, the problem solving and the using, applying. They, because the teachers are able to get through the content more quickly, as Jen said, they, they are moving on to the using and applying a lot more earlier in the week and to a greater depth than they were before. And certainly some of the schools that have put it in, across into other subjects as well, like science, you're finding that, again, um, in primary schools, um, practical science isn't always probably um, given as much time uh, as probably the knowledge bit, um, but where the schools have, have um, been uh, translated across to science, they're able to spend more time in class um, looking at investigations and um, developing the inquiring skills that they need, uh, a lot more in terms of them being ready for uh, year seven um, when they come up. Uh, if you go to the next slide as well, um, there's a teacher here that was saying about been teaching for 10 years. Oh, um, oh, that was oh don't, I don't, don't worry, it's fine. I think <laughs> I, think I maybe had that one. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So we've just found that um, teachers are really reflecting. It's an opportunity for them to reflect on what they're doing within the classroom mm -hmm. and even very experienced teachers have fed back mm -hmm. that they'd realised they were focusing too much on those lower order skills with, with pupils and there's been a shift or a change in their approach to teaching topics. Um, something with a new curriculum, there's been a lot of um, talk as well about using practical equipment either even um, further up the school and with Key Stage 2 and Upper Key Stage 2 and there's been a shift to using practical equipment to support understanding um, and teachers have spoken about that as well that it's allowing them um, to develop a more practical approach in maths mm. and and actually I think both at Shireland and at so, you know some of the schools um, flip learning has allowed teachers to revisit the questioning and because we'd linked it to Bloom's taxonomy um, a lot of teachers have suddenly realized that their questioning um, was always at the lower end and they hadn't really they weren't really scaffolding higher order questions for them in class and it just it was a great time for us to return to questioning and look at that obviously assessment for learning you know this is assessment for learning before you even get into the classroom isn't it really um, yeah. so it links great with that but also you know and Javier talked about this it just makes your differentiation in the lesson so much more flexible but accurate as well you know those groups that you have I think long gone in Shireland are the times when you made a decision that these were the groups in your class and it would be half a term but until you did the next test that they were going to be sitting in the same groups we're finding that you know t students are sitting in the groups that they need to be on a particular topic because that's life isn't it you might be good at uh, computational maths but you uh, but you rubbish with spatial awareness so your shape and space isn't that great and it allows that for that flexibility and really personalizing the learning for the child yeah I wonder if that's um, part of the reason and, and it, it really seems you've um, you've found and have you definitely echoed the same sentiment that you thought it'd be great for the learners that are already uh, able and independent and at the top of the class but actually it's been good for all of the other students maybe part of it is that I'm not necessarily at the bottom because if I understand this particular topic well, I can be learning at a higher level for that topic. Yeah, 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, some schools have previously used teaching assistants in that way. I've definitely heard of schools where mm. if there was a group who they um, expected wouldn't understand so well, they'd be pre-taught and have a session before the main lesson with the whole class so that they were kind of got up to speed. Um, uh, this is another way of doing that. It's giving them yeah. a head start. Some of the children are talking about, oh, it gives me a boost to my learning, or it gives me a head start. And I think that's quite a good way to think of it. Brilliant. Yeah, that's uh, um, Now, before um, we continue, I know that we're just coming up to 4.30, so I would like to encourage anyone who's got questions to type them in now. Um, and I think we'll probably overrun by about five minutes. But um, if you've got a question, play it To in. be honest, Diggy, I mean, the rest of our, uh, if you want to skip... Um, until um, slide 19, that's fine for us, you know, because I think we've we've covered all the bits and pieces in that in that presentation just by talking. Okay, brilliant. Now I can't see which one's slide 19 at the moment. Can you tell oh, me when to stop? On. Flip, Flip on. Flip on. Oh, great. Yeah, I had that on my last slide, so that works out well. Ooh. Oh, and everyone's got these, so do uh, do do read through through these. So, oh, oh, right, here we go. Do I need to? Whoop. Great. Well, if you if you want to see if there's any questions, and then we, we can finish on that if you want. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, so if you've got any questions and you can speak using your mic, please do ask them now. If you're typing them in, then I will read them out. Uh, no, we've not got any further questions. I wondered, um, one of the things that was brought up earlier was the idea of um, training students. So, Javi, I know you mentioned that with your year eights, it was important to train them specifically. You were sort of how to take notes if you're reading videos, um, reading, watching videos. I, I wondered, um, Jen, what have you found in in the primary schools in in key stage two students in terms of them learning that this is a way of working? Yeah, I mean, I think they've they've picked it up quite quickly, but the teacher does need to make their expectations clear. I have seen in some of the schools when um, this approach was first introduced, um, just to kind of train the pupils up, they held people workshops. So um, for some of those, I went along as well and made sure that children could access the resources. And that might sound silly, but it was worth taking the time to make sure that they could log in with the there um, and access all of the various resources. And then following up from that, some teachers did start out by having the children access um, the content outside the math lesson but still in school, so perhaps on a Friday afternoon before they went home, just for a couple of weeks to get them used to the routine. They'd access the class site together, um, perhaps watch the, the video or the PowerPoint or my math lesson or whatever it was together in class. Over the weekend, they'd do the follow-up side of it and do the assessment um, just for a few weeks until pupils were used to that, and then they shifted to full flip learning where they did that at home. Um, so it was worth doing some training or um, making sure you're setting regular tasks. So it might be that you start flip learning in a small way, but that they, the children expect something regularly, even if it's just something that's a, a small task that won't take them too long, so that they get used to that routine and the habit of checking the class site and then doing the task at home. Where it's worked less less successfully, I'd say, is where teachers have tried to do something um, less regularly, actually, so the pupils and, and the families as well, because often families will be involved with uh, primary level homework. Um, if they, they leave it too long in between tasks and then children aren't in the routine of checking and doing it. Um, something we also did was we held some family workshops out in the schools. So we invited parents in um, and got them involved, explained the approach to them and what was expected, and then did some practical work again with the devices there, getting online and letting parents see the type of tasks their, their children would be getting at home. Brilliant. Thanks very much. So actually training in in how to how to flip learn yourself, how to how to access the videos, do it in the classroom first, get them comfortable with the idea. I think that's a yeah. really good advice. Um, there's a there's an extra question here from Natalie, who's at Passmore's Academy. Um, she's asking if this is something she can do as a standalone teacher in the school or if it needs to be done as a whole school thing. And I think, Kirsty, when you first implemented it, um, at, at Shireland, the, the flipped learning was done 
by a few teachers first and, th and then by the whole school is that right I think that's the same for Javi yeah absolutely yeah, I mean mm. I, 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 this is this is something that can easily be taken and have it have a you, you must see this as well at your school is is that it can start with just a teacher or two or three teachers um, I think what we realized though very quickly on that the teachers who did try it we saw the impact that it was having um, not just on the val our value added and our, and our results and levels of progress but also in the quality of teaching so and I think it got to a point where we thought we can't ignore this because if this is such a successful strategy for these teachers here why wouldn't you um, you know make it as that so that all teachers do that and um, you know we actually say now that all, all teachers are expected to flip um, and and actually to get outstanding you have to show that you use technology really effectively and, and part of that could be could be flip learning and in terms of the quality of teaching I've just got some stats here we went from in terms of outstanding lessons in 2010 which was at 10 percent 60 percent so in five years our quality of teaching has risen to 50% um, outstanding um, wow. and so all none of our teachers are graded as below good so they're either good or outstanding so 50% are actually it says 60% doesn't it 60% outstanding and um, the 40% are, are good and and part of that it's not all down to flip learning but we, we've just done a, a round of lesson observations in the Academy some of the stuff that was going on was just simply unbelievable absolutely unbelievable in terms of flip learning and the quality and I think that's where we are now it's the quality of the flip learning that's taking place it's not just we're putting the resources on or a video for you to watch um, it's the quality of the flip learning that, that's taking place I mean we saw one yesterday about um, it was Pudding Lane um, that was the theme this is in year 8 classroom um, and he started, the teacher started the lesson with the flip learning feedback about what is a long term cause and effect and what's a short term cause and effect. And he started the lesson with the misconceptions. He listed, he, he typed out misconceptions from the work that the children had done, and some of them weren't. And they had to identify which ones were real misconceptions and which ones weren't. And he actually started the lesson on that. Now that's right. for a year eight children to be able to be looking and identifying which the, the, which of them got bits wrong and then they looked at model responses and had to identify um, which one was the higher level response out of two um, and they had a rubric to do that and that was all based they couldn't have done that in the lesson without having done that before having at home brilliant so really you're saying for, but, for a teacher she should be doing it. It. <laughs> But then getting the whole school, yeah, right? What you try. <laughs> mm. Yeah, try it, you know? Yeah. Brill. Um, Javi, I wonder, um, I know that when you first started implementing it, you were part yeah. of um, uh, a kind of a, an action research group. Is that right? You and yeah, that's, Katie? That's, and Sadie, yeah, that's, that's correct. This is how we started, obviously, because, uh, again, we found out about flip learning and we just wanted to try. We like trialing and, you know, it's a, there's a lot of trial and error in the school. Mm. So we... What I would like to say, you know, everything that has been said, I, I completely agree with that. But when I have um, spoken to other people about flip learning, I always uh, recommend that, if possible, uh, when someone starts, you know, to, to do some flip learning, I recommend to try to do some work with a colleague, try to get someone on board, because um, it's so much easier to prepare, you know, everything with someone else, you know, to prepare, you know, obviously resources, because obviously differentiation was a key element or is a key element for us. Uh, and trying to differentiate, um, obviously, I don't know, activities for three different groups, it's mm -hmm. it's really, really hard, particularly at the beginning. It's extremely rewarding when you see that you've got three different groups of four, all of them working, you know, at their own pace. Yeah. Um, it's, it's brilliant, but trying to share, you know, some of the ideas and, and the resources and the work that has to be done in advance, I think that it is really, really important to... To, to do it but definitely you know it's just choose one group um, you know just the odd lesson and then you know once you're a bit more confident with that perhaps you would like to 
you know, um, do, I don't know, a few lessons in a row, or perhaps, you know, if you're really, really brave with lots of, um, you know, experience and practice, you might like to do, I don't know, a few weeks or, or a whole half term. I did um, flip learning, you know, with my year nines, current year nines, and current year tens. In year nines, I did flip the whole term, but mm -hmm. um, even though, obviously, we were talking about, so I mentioned earlier about having all the resources in there for them, I didn't just say to them, um, here you have all the resources, off you go. Obviously, I didn't do that. It was extremely planned and structured because um, if I, you know, had I said that to my students, they would not have been able to cope with that. Um, and I don't think that they would have been able to produce, you know, the final outcome that, that, I, that I got in the end. So it's really, really, you know, a structure week by week or, you know, a few lessons at the time. Everything is up to that, you know, is there for them. But, yeah, I am still in control of that, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks very much, Javi. And thanks, Kirsty and Jen, for your inputs as well. Now, Kirsty, before we go, I, I want to tell everyone about this event because for me, it's the most exciting event in, in terms of flipped learning that is going to happen this academic year. Flipcon doesn't normally come to the UK. This year it's coming not just to the UK, but to Shireland. So I, I'm really excited about it. Now, Kirsty, I don't know if you want to say more about it. Well, it's just, I mean, you're excited about it. I mean, um, you know, these these guys I've, I've read, I've got their books, yeah. you know, about with Flip Classroom. So to have the opportunity to meet them and to, to listen to them, if that's if Aaron Sams gets his visa sorted out. Oh, no. Wow. He's got with his visa. But John, oh, like, John's like... definitely over. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, and it would be great to, it would be great to see some of, some of the people from, whole ed, you know, from the different schools who've got an interest in, in flip learning um, coming across as well. I mean, we're just defining the details of it, but it's going to be a two-day event um, with an evening social as well um, in Birmingham. Great. So uh, if you want to, want to experience the nightlife in Birmingham, um, <laughs> <laughs> we can do some flips of that. We can we can go and, Jen and I'll go and record some, some scenes of Birmingham nightlife and send it through to you. <laughs> great, yeah, yeah, we can prepare. Yeah. Can I, can I quickly say one thing? Um, yeah. I um, I um, went to bed two years ago and I saw Aaron Sampson, John Berman, and they are brilliant. They oh, are as a speak, they are two fantastic speakers. So really, you know, obviously, I'm just waiting yeah. for my line manager just to see if, if I can go. Um, oh, are, oh, we'd love to have you. And Javier, you are, know, they're doing. Um, They've just they've just um, been doing some new books. So um, in terms yeah. of secondary, they're doing a flip primary, but they're also doing flip different subject ones. So for like flip maths, flip science, and I'm sure yeah. there's a flip languages one that they're doing world languages. Okay, brilliant. It's good to know that. Oh, great. Yeah, I'll be asking for them to sign them. <laughs> I'm the embarrassing well, person well, there, but you know. Well, I think <laughs> I think um, we're having discussions about whether or not we could put um, uh, a couple of books in the in the pack. You oh, know, in terms wow. of when people are here. So great. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, and thank you to everyone for staying on as well. I'm sorry that we've run over by ten minutes. That is um, entirely my fault for not getting the tech working at the beginning. But um, you know, one extra lesson that was mentioned before is uh, making sure that you know what to do <laughs> when tech isn't working. Very important for flipped learning. <laughs> um, thank, thanks very much, Kirsty, Jen, and Javi, and for everyone for coming. And um, we'll speak soon. Okay, Thanks, thank folks. You then. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Vicky. Bye. Bye.